SAS also gives us the ability to extend onto the SAS script functions. So you can come up with your own functions and call them back as you see fit. So in this lecture, I'll look at creating a simple function that compares two lists and checks their length to make sure that they match. So here is the code and we can see we have our two lists back again from the previous lecture. And what we want to do is count how many values are in each list and make sure that they are the same. So we have the function declaration here and then we have a little CSS slash we call back our function to give us the output. And the output is either yep if the lengths do match or nope if the lengths don't match. So how did I set up this function? Well, we use the at function directive and then we need to give our function a name. This name will be used later to call it back. Then we have the opening and closing brackets. Within the opening and closing brackets, we have the arguments, a lot like the mixins that we created in an earlier lecture. This means that we can take these arguments and use them within the function. Then we have the opening and closing parentheses and whatever is encapsulated in those opening and closing parentheses will be executed on the functions callback. Then we have two variables that have been declared inside of the function. Now this is also important to note that len and len2 can only be called back within the function. The same for list and list2, again because we have variable scoping. So what variable scoping is, is if a variable has been declared in the global namespace, such as headers and font size, it can be called back from wherever you are within that SAS file or SCSS file. However, because len and len2 have been declared and created within that function, they can only be called back within that function. This is called scoping. And the first variable, len is looking at the length of the first list that's being passed in through the first argument, which is list. And then we have len2, which checks the length of the second list passed in through the second argument, list2. Now here comes the brains of the function, which is the if statement, because now we have the two values of the length of the first and the second list, we need to compare them, and we do this with an at if directive. And the if statement is checking len equals the same as len2. If that statement is correct, we want to return the string yup. Now, the reason why we have return in here is because that controls what the function will output. And it will only output the string yup if the len and len2 variables values match exactly. However, if that doesn't happen, we have at else. And then we use again the at return and it will return nope. So we can control what the function returns by just using the at return. Now, once we've done that, we can go ahead and call back this function. So I've just provided a little CSS. So we've got HTML with the width CSS property, and then we call back the function list match. Now, what I could do is manually type in a list, but that could be a little bit of a problem because we don't want those commas interfering. So instead, I've got two variables, both containing lists, and so I might as well pass those in. So headers is list and font size is list two. So those lists will be passed in through those variables. And guess what? You will end up with Yep, because they both match. However, if I just take one value away, let's say from font size, well now font size has five values, so the length is five, and headers has six. So they don't match anymore, and it will return the string nope. And also, as always, I provided the SAS syntax for you as well, which you can see is, again, very, very different. We don't have those opening and closing parentheses, which can make things a little bit awkward to read, and we're going with indentation. But it's all the same functionality in SAS as there is in SCSS.